All right, so welcome to today's um, July community call. And thank you all for joining us. Um, so I know I'm a new face to many of you. I'm Caitlin. I just recently joined Kong to lead the developer and community marketing function. Um, so I'm super excited because today I'm going to talk a little bit about um, some of the work Kevin and I are doing. Um, I know many of you are familiar with our community programs, but I don't think we've ever really taken a chance to just kind of go over like where we're at with all of them. Um, and then some of our plans for where we're headed. And then I'd love to open this up to a discussion to talk a little bit about um, all of your thoughts on what, on some of these things. Um, so the Google Doc, I dropped this in the chat as well. Um, if we have, I think, a good sized group today where we can go around and do individual introductions if that works for all of you. Sure. I can go. Uh, I'm Jeremy. I work with uh, Optum. Uh, we leverage Kong uh, in our private cloud infrastructure uh, as an API gateway technology. And uh, excited to be here. Uh, part of the Kong Champions program. And looking forward to seeing people uh, at the, the Kong conference in October. Definitely. Oh, I, can, I, I can go if you have I'm not sure because I'm on the screen right now. So, uh, let's see. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, uh, well, I'm Sean. I'm tech lead with the core team uh, here at Kong. Awesome. Yeah. Hi, I'm, I'm Daniel. I'm from Germany. I work for Codecentric, and we are a becoming partner of Kong, hopefully in the next uh, six months or so. Awesome. What's your dog's name? Uh, Kurt. Oh. Like Kurt Cobain. <laughs> Just a little, little tiny one. So. So cute. Really cute. Yep. And uh, you all know me by now. I'm Hannah. Um, I'm on this call because I'm really excited to see what Caitlin's going to do with our community developer marketing. Um, she's a pro and we're really lucky to have her on our team. So uh, I'm just along for the ride now. All right, let's see, I think my introduction slide's next. So um, leading into that, so like I said, um, I just joined Kong about four weeks ago now um, to work on developer and community marketing. So what that means is really making sure that the community around the open source project has the support, the resources that they need um, to make it a really positive um, journey for them. So with that, I'll be working really closely with Kevin. He's in China right now, so he's not able to join this call. He's our developer advocate. Um, so a lot of his stuff will be like speaking, um, engaging with the community day to day, some of that work, um, creating content, and then I'll be making sure he has all the resources and support he needs to do his job as well. Um, and in San Francisco right now, I'm actually based out of Reno, Nevada. So um, I'll be working remote as with the team and then um, in and out of San Francisco. So um, like I said, today I wanna just take a little bit of time to go over what our community programs are, some ways for you to get involved, and then um, open this up to a discussion. You know, we're really kicking this into high gear for over the next year. Um, so I wanna make sure that like whatever your wish list is, we're helping to make that happen as well. Um, so the first program that we have here, we have our five Kong champions right now. Um, you know, Jeremy mentioned that he's one of them. They're really frequent contributors to the Kong project and the community around it. Um, so this is a list of champions that we have here um, on this slide. Um, I have a link here to the application for anybody that's interested in applying to the program as well. Um, and then um, all of us will be out at Kong Summit in San Francisco this year. Um, so I think we'll get a chance to meet face to face, which will be great. So speaking of Kong Summit, that's coming up October 2nd and 3rd in San Francisco. There's a link to register here, as well as a code for 70% off um, the ticket price for all of our community call participants. Um, so we are getting ready to launch the schedule within hopefully the next two weeks or so. Um, I'm really excited. We're going to have a lot of great sessions, expert panels, some workshops. Um, I kind of have just a high level what topics we're going to be covering here. Um, and then, like I said, we're hard at work finishing out the schedule. So we'll be announcing that in the coming weeks. 
Just to jump in there really quickly, Caitlin, um, the Kong Summit is a, a pretty wide range of folks this year. It's community members and users, it's uh, some customers, some partners. Um, and we really value that uh, there's a lot of you here who take the time every month to join our community call and participate, as well as all the other work that you're doing um, uh, related to your jobs and Kong outside. Um, so this, this discount ticket code won't expire, um, but it's kind of our gesture uh, that, you know, we really want our community members here. And those of you, uh, those of you on this call really count as that in particular. Um, and that if uh, that is still uh, financially unfeasible for you and you would like to attend, please reach out to Caitlin, Kevin, or I directly and we'll find a way to get you there. Definitely. Okay, I'm off my soapbox. <laughs> Thanks, Hannah. Um, and then we also, I just wanted to briefly cover our contributor t-shirt. So if you are a contributor to the Kong project, um, you're eligible to get a contributor t-shirt. We have a new t-shirt design that we're pretty excited about. Um, so if your pull request was accepted, fixes a bug, has a significant contribution, um, definitely fill out the form to get your t-shirt. All right, um, so these next few slides, I'm gonna start opening it up to discussion again. Um, so we are, one of the things we're really focused on right now is building out our meetup schedule for um, the remainder of the year and then where we're gonna be at next year. So we just recently got done with some meetups in Beijing, Ch Shanghai, and Seoul. Seoul. Um, Kevin's on, um, he is out in Asia for the next few weeks. Um, a couple things that we're looking at doing are, um, you know, Kevin can't be in all places at all times. Um, so we are trying to get him to places where, um, you know, he can go to multiple meetups at the same time or um, making the content accessible so that if any of you are interested in presenting at your local meetup, you have access to all those resources as well. As well. Um, but just wanted to see if, you know, uh, you know, where you'd like to see us in the, the coming year, um, or if, you know, you're running any of your own local meetups, all of that. Y'all just recently opened an office in Atlanta, right? So, so you are on East Coast as well. So that'd probably be a good location to start us somewhere around Atlanta, which is kind of a good central spot on the East Coast to get to. Yeah, definitely. We've been talking a lot about Atlanta recently. I know for you Midwest folks, uh, we recently did one in Cincinnati. Um, and so, uh, yeah, these, these meetups could be kind of anywhere in the world as long as there's someone who's interested in, in, in helping us run them. Oh, I think us in Minnesota don't consider Cincinnati the Midwest, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> what is it considered? Great Lakes region? Minneapolis would be great. Okay. I, I know that. So Optum, I mean, Jeremy's on the on the East Coast, but uh, we have a, our headquarters here in Minneapolis. All right. Well, officially withdrawn about the Midwest comment then. <laughs> Daniel, anything else you want to add about meetups or chat about? Yeah, we, we talked or, or we write already about uh, the meetup possibilities in, in Germany. So maybe there is something we can, can build it up. So I'm still in talk with, with some of our branch managers at Codecentric. So maybe there is uh, some more possibilities in, in more cities around Germany. So this is something we can yeah, develop in the next year. Is there a possibility or anything of if there's local organizers, if there's support from um, the Kong community that like they can provide either content that a local organizer could present on or uh, stickers or shirts or swag or something that they could send for a meetup, for example? Yeah, totally. Um, and that's what I, I forgot to mention. So if um, you're on the ground or there's a local meetup organizer who wants to put on one of these um, we are happy to help sponsor, send swag, um, content for the presentation, anything like that as well. Uh, uh, where, where is the best place to uh, learn 
talking about the calendar or for example, I, I might be an introvert, so if anything happens being around me, that's where I am maybe a good idea to try to catch up with there. Sorry, I'm having a little trouble hearing you, but I think you were asking about like the calendar for where you could see these events. Yep. Yeah, so we, right now, one of the places is on, um, we promote all of these through the Kong, whatever the local Kong meetup is. Um, I think we are looking at some ways to make this information more readily available on the community page, and I think that will be the go-to place to see what's coming up. Yeah, on the community call or the community page currently, if you scroll down about halfway through, there's a scrolling roundabout section of uh, events. So we list upcoming meetups there. Um, we also tend to post them on, um, I want to say Kong Nation and possibly even Gitter, uh, as well as um, if there's one local to the area, we send out an, an email in advance to anyone who kind of fits our our regional uh, criteria there in the database, like your location is Germany, we'll send you something in Germany. Yes. Awesome, any other thoughts on meetups? All right, here we go. Um, and then one other thing I wanted to mention in this Paul, is that we are looking at releasing multi-language support for plugin development. So um, basically this would mean that you could interact with the plugins in your you know, programming language of choice. So we're aiming to release the first one at Kong Summit. We're going to start with Go. Um, but curious what languages y'all are using um, that you would like to see this available in. Um, Go is obviously a good start. Uh, Python, um, .NET, Java, uh, all, all popular languages. Aaron would yeah. probably say Kotlin. <laughs> well, I'd say I'd say Kotlin, but I don't really want to throw a JVM into Kong. So right. nothing that's JVM based, please. It's true. I knew when I was saying Java, you'd be like, huh, Java? How's that going to get in there? <laughs> hey, I, I love me my, my JVM stuff for most things, but I don't really want to pay the cost of that inside of a, our API gateway. All right. So Go would be great. Yeah. All right. Um, well, yeah, if there's some, you know, anything we didn't cover here that you think of further down the line, let us know as we start building this out. Um, but definitely look forward to that coming at Kong Summit. Um, so like I said, I just, you know, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, what we're doing going forward. So a lot of what we're focused on now is just building out resources and content, like I said, to make it really easy to get started with Kong. Um, making sure that you all have the resources that you need. Um, so I kind of want to talk a little bit about like what topics you'd like us to cover. Um, you know, we can do videos, blogs, webinars. Um, you know, is there anything specific, specific pain points maybe as you were getting started or as you're working with Kong where you'd like to see us cover that type of content? Personally, I've always thought y'all have done a really good do or a really good job with your documentation. Um, every now and then, obviously, you know, as you create new features and new things come out, it gets out of date. But you know, y'all do a pretty good job catching that up and, and keeping it up to date. Uh, one thing I would say there probably isn't a whole lot on is uh, like links out to interactive, uh, you know, applications to kind of test stuff in a sandbox or. Um, Maybe some video demonstrations as well on the main website. I'm sure it could be helpful to some people. Mm -hmm. But but the documentation is also very solid. So uh, definitely tip my hat on that. Yeah. 
The docs team will be thrilled to hear that. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, plus it's docs as code, right? So people can go in and, you know, make the changes and then y'all review them to bring them in, which is really nice because so you can get that community engagement around your documentation as well, which is really slick. We've kind of adopted that sort of stuff internally too with uh, docs as code. What about like information for how, um, like when a new release comes out, how that information is communicated to you? Hmm. So yeah, right now y'all do um, like a Kong forum post, at least for the community edition. Um, and I know for enterprise, y'all do kind of the email distribution list format. Um, uh, I mean, the, the current approach isn't too bad. Uh, it's usually, you know, a GitHub stamp and a change log and the, the Kong forum post. Uh, I guess you could start uh, interchanging if you wanted to. You could, you know, post as part of the uh, an email group as well to the community that there's been an update to the Kong community edition. But you also want to make sure to be clear to not confuse folks that are on that enterprise distribution list to not mix up the, the Kong versions that are being released at the time. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, y'all have Facebook or Twitter or things like that, social media. You could also announce new releases on, on those platforms as well. I think y'all have a Twitter. We do. We do, yeah. We tend to post there as well. Um, but if you're not seeing that, then uh, maybe we can uh, bump that post and I'll uh, let our social media manager know about that. Thank you, Jeremy. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm not on Twitter, but yeah, that's a good idea. All right. I do remember that. We tried to find you one time. <laughs> <laughs> Old school Facebook. That's about it. <laughs> Awesome. Do any of you have like a wish list, you know, something you really wish that we had that's not currently one of our community programs? Or an improvement to any of the existing ones? It can be anything. I'll take even like crazy suggestions. Hmm. Well, <laughs> from my perspective, y'all are probably the first application that I've worked with uh, from like an open source community perspective. So I don't really have a whole lot of visibility into how other companies are driving that um, and what approaches they take that are a positive. But I think y'all do a good job with it. Um, I'm not sure if Aaron, Aaron has any uh, community engagements he's worked with with other companies before uh, or other applications before that he knows how they drive things. I, the only thing I, that I don't know if it's from a community perspective is a roadmap of, of the plans. If that's somewhere in the community doc somewhere that you can take a look and say, not just the immediate like release candidates, but in three, six, a year, these are what we want to build out or this, these are the things we're thinking of. And maybe those exist and I haven't, I just don't know where they are located. Yeah, that's true. Publicizing the future roadmap probably is a really good positive. Um, I know I've seen uh, uh, what, uh, Tebow's uh, slide deck uh, that he has presented on, I think, in Japan, where he talks about kind of the future of some of the stuff Kong's working on. But um, I haven't actually seen it publicized on uh, like Kong HQ or, or in the GitHub repo itself for the future roadmap. So maybe that would be a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, definitely um, something we can look into. That's actually probably one of the <laughs> most popular requests I've gotten across open source projects. So um, that's great to hear. And I guess from our perspective as a, a user of it, where 
it comes into play, not just to see it, but if there are things on our internal wish list or things that we want to do as well. Um, and if we see that you guys are working on it, then we can pitch in or, you know, have some conversations around it too. So that's my ask of why I was like, would like to love to see that information where you guys are thinking to take things. Yeah, that sounds great. I, you know, I was thinking more of like building towards what's on the roadmap, but I think that would be a great way to get people involved if, if they see what's coming. Any other thoughts? All right, well, like I said, this is, you know, kind of my biggest priority right now. So if there's anything that comes up, um, open line of communication uh, for any feedback, ideas, anything like that. Um, and that was pretty much, let me see if there's any other topics here. Yeah, I think that was all of the topics I wanted to cover. So, um, I will open it up if anybody has any other things that they'd like to cover during the remainder of our time. Um, I was just going to give a shout out. I um, really wanted to thank you all for uh, some of the efforts uh, we had recently with you around a Keep Live issue we had. Uh, your principal engineer, Thibaut, had a nice little patch fix for uh, how to do a, a Keep Live differently at the Nginx layer, so at the web server layer, which was kind of some deep stuff, and that really helped us out and really gave us a lot of uh, performance and uh, uh, platform benefits uh, within our, our enterprise. Yeah, awesome, man. Uh, nice to hear. Uh, so, yeah, so like uh, we were seeing on the issues, we, we ship those uh, we ship the patch with Kong 1.3 probably and Nginx uh, OpenResty 1.17. Uh, so yeah, awesome. So that's, that's yeah, really no, good news. Yeah, yeah, really appreciate it, man. Thank you. Sure, no worries. Yeah, you're welcome. And again, like thanks for testing it too. <laughs> it looks like Trevor had a follow-up question. Uh, he says, the harder question, is there an ETA on a Kong 1.3? and also about the enterprise version. Uh, he's with WeWork, so they're enterprise customers. Yeah, absolutely. We have an ETA for Kong 1.3. Maybe I'll let uh, Hisham speak to that, if, if Hisham can speak. Right, thanks. Uh, yeah, yes, uh, yeah, we're, we're aiming for the end of July. So uh, yeah, with uh, our, our RC before that. And so like we, like we said in the previous uh, community calls, 1.3 comes with the gRPC support, right? So that's... Uh, the main, um, the main addition to it, plus uh, OpenResty 115.8, uh, as well as a header by, a routing by arbitrary request headers too. Those are topics we covered, I think, in a, like a couple of community calls ago, maybe, um, maybe a month ago, two months ago. And the EE version, um, yeah, so for Kong Enterprise to be based on the Kong 1.3 community edition, which is not even released yet, I think we're looking at uh, late summer, probably, um, maybe even closer to September, I would say, but I mean, we don't have estimates for that yet, so I'm really playing a guessing game here, uh, so don't quote me on that. Uh, currently, uh, the team is working on supporting Kong 1.2 uh, and declarative configuration in enterprise. And then after 1.3 is released, you know, um, I suppose I think the timeline puts, timeline puts, up, puts us to yeah, end of, end of August, September, something like that, end of the summer. Yeah, but uh, again, guessing here. Is gRPC support at the layer seven layer yet, or is that still um, layer four for now and 1.3? No, uh, layer seven in, uh, okay. in 1.3. Yep, yep. We're, uh, we're talking about um, 
you know, being able to uh, to apply plugins to uh, to gRPC um, uh, transactions and eventually even you know being able to read parts of the gRPC message, etc. So it's ongoing right now. Very cool. Yeah. One of our customers um, internally, uh, we're starting to count down some of the GraphQL um, things as, as well as gRPC. Um, is there any thoughts or supports of kind of having some sort of GraphQL native things inside of Kong? Whether yes. it's like, like the Explorer or you know, some, yeah. something, right? Yeah, that it is also a protocol that we um, are planning on supporting eventually. Uh, I think we haven't quite yet decided the path forward for it, but uh, I can also let Hisham speak to that as well, because if I remember correctly, one of his uh, company hackathon projects was actually supporting GraphQL inside of Kong. But I think it was more on the admin API side, if I remember correctly. Uh, yes, I believe so, yeah. Uh, that was actually like one of the first things I did at Kong, and, and at the time, uh, it, it was interesting for a project that was bridging the the internal uh, DAO, like internal database for Kong for exposing them as well. So at the time, that was like two years ago, and the state of new libraries for that was not quite there yet. But uh, yeah, we'll have to see uh, how the things are going uh, right now with our support for, for GraphQL. But even then, we could we could always bridge libraries with you know, other languages and move that forward. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's definitely something that's that's doable. There's nothing fundamental that would prevent us from supporting it. So yes, it's a matter of just deciding exactly how it might. Yeah, it's it's definitely a, um, a something like an item that we've been uh, looking at and we, we have on our mind for uh, the roadmap, like more like long term maybe, because we haven't prioritized it quite yet, but uh, Kong is moving more and more towards uh, supporting other protocols, right? So we started with layer four, like just you know TCP, uh, we move into UDP eventually, we have gRPC in 1.3, and then GraphQL is another one that is on our list uh, for sure. Um, but we don't have a timeline yet. Um, we we are maybe we can talk a little bit about upcoming CE releases. So after 1.3, with the you know the new features that we talked about, we're looking at 1.4 uh, later this summer as well, where uh, we're planning on uh, sort of uh, doing a consolidation release with um, uh, you know uh, bug fixes, improvements, uh, any sort of uh, usability and performance improvements we can make. Um, so we we have uh, a few of those. Uh, in our backlog, uh, especially some some improvements regarding um, uh, caching and uh, uh, some improvements regarding um, uh, the DO itself. Um, and after that, we're looking at 1.5, which will again be an alternative release, so focused on new features again. Um, and so we're looking at low balancer improvements mainly for 1.5. Uh, from the perspective of you know maybe like being able to support um, uh, A/B testing or request shadowing or sort of versioning uh, not like in the core, right? So being able to specify a multiple upstream pair service and being able to have uh, say um, a service send request to a one upstream or the other based on different parameters. So to do like wording upgrades or to do versioning or request shadowing. Uh, and that sort of um, that being able to configure multiple upstreams to the same service means that you're able to uh, use it as you wish, right? So it could be each upstream could be a different version of the service, or each upstream could be a different data center for the service. So you try the local data center copy of the service first. Uh, so that's that's the sort of improvements we're looking at for 1.5. Again, uh, the timeline would be at this point would be late summer, September, uh, something like that. Yeah, just to just to add a note on that, uh, I think one, uh, one thing that kind of 
become clear is that some releases tend to be like more feature heavy. And, uh, like one drop one was about uh, the prior config and 1.3 is coming up with RPC and, and some of them are more really about uh, uh, solidifying the platform, so, like all of the performance improvements in 1.2, for example. And, and we, we, we want to do that same kind of work that we did for 1.2 for, for 1.4. So it's kind of healthy for the project because uh, features are flashy and everyone loves features, but at the same time, uh, as the project moves forward, we have to build a solid platform. So actually taking the time to do that kind of work in some releases and focus on as well is also very healthy for the project. Yeah, absolutely. Ooh, and one thing that I think we left out for now of um, where uh, two things that I think are worth mentioning, especially given um, users we have on the call right now, is uh, mature TLS capabilities, uh, shipping in uh, upcoming releases of Kong. So sort of um, what, what we're talking about here is the ability for Kong to, uh, first of all, verify a client certificate when uh, it is uh, when we're receiving a client connection um, and being able to do that dynamically via the PDK and as well as setting a client certificate when opening a connection upstream via the PDK as well. So those are improvements that we're looking at shipping in, in Kong 1.3, especially the upstream, the upstream part, uh, which is uh, um, coming soon into the shape of a PR. And um, we'll also eventually be looking at mutual TLS against uh, Postgres and Cassandra and all the forms of uh, connections that Kong opens. Um, yeah, so mutual TLS is, uh, is a big deal for us as well. Um, and the, uh, the second thing that I wanted to talk about um, was the, uh, the improvements that we're planning on making. So, uh, for this, we're probably looking at 1.4 being like a consolidation release, like Hisham said, like less feature heavy based. Um, so Nginx configuration improvements in the sense that we want to you know, hide uh, and avoid the pattern of creating custom Nginx templates over and over again, which we think is sort of a, a, a heavy task for users to, to, to do and to have to upgrade this template as the upgrade conversion, et cetera. So we're looking at in like new ways of configuring uh, Nginx via the con configuration file that uh, injects directive, um, which is something that uh, Harry has been working on, Harry who's in the call right now, uh, since 1.1, I believe. Um, and we've sort of uh, moved towards a pattern where we want to, to um, rely on defaulted Nginx injected directives. Um, instead of having to say, copy the whole Nginx template and configure SSL protocols that you want to enable, you can just edit one property in the config file, um, which is which maps to Nginx and an Nginx directive. And we'll add uh, hook points into the Nginx configuration file as well, uh, like with include directives. And you'll just be able to dump a whole uh, Nginx sub configuration file if you want to. Um, if you have like say like more servers that you want to run inside of Kong, more Nginx server blocks or, or, or things like that. So, so those are other improvements that we're looking at, uh, at making, um, which, you know, for everyday users of Kong make a big difference, we believe. Not quite as shiny as gRPC support, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, another of those protocols that we're looking at, so since we had a question about um, GraphQL, is Kafka. So another thing that is important for us to support is, um, and so you know, for Kafka, I believe if we're looking at one of those really heavy features and potentially 1.5. Uh, since we have 1.3 ready, 1.4 consolidation, 1.5 is the next feature ready. And so 1.5 would be uh, probably where we start introducing some Kafka integration uh, support. So again, like this is uh, not quite established yet, but uh, for example, the ability to map an HTTP request uh, into a, a, a Kafka query um, on the upstream side, or being able to do uh, to integrate uh, or login plugins with Kafka, and being able to have Kong uh, maybe pull Kafka queues, etc. So, 
So those, those are the sort of uh, integrations we're looking at, at doing so with, uh, yeah. With the Kafka stuff then, basically implementing like the, the Kafka REST API then as a, mm -hmm. as a direct thing inside of Kong to wrap a topic? Yeah, potentially, yeah. And then consuming side stream, like a WebSocket or something else? Yeah, um, it's, it's, it's not quite spiked out, spiked out yet. So um, my point is just that, you know, on top of GraphQL, on top of gRPC, HTTP, uh, TCP, we're looking at uh, GraphQL, Kafka, or more like Kafka, GraphQL, and UDP in that order. That's super, that's interesting that, that those are the priorities. Uh, I'm guessing those are driven from some like community and customer demand and stuff, but. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, that would be correct. We're looking at uh, inbound from community users and from enterprise users as well, yeah. Would you, would you say, what would you say would be the priority for you? Well, well we have a, a, like a really, really heavy Kafka base, mm -hmm. base but um, nobody, at least in our enterprise, drives it through a single gateway like that. It's, it's, it's never even a thought or a, a request of us as the owners of the gateway to like mm -hmm. drive a, a Kafka topic behind it. It's just more been like the, a team, the Kafka admin team has set up the Kafka REST APIs right there, there if the team wants to do it, because it's easy enough, it's provided by Confluent already. Mm -hmm. so it's, I think, just, it's, it's interesting to, to hear that other that people and and Kong is prioritizing that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, yeah, we've had, we've had actually, yeah, a bunch of inbound requests for it, but I think it's also important to maybe see Kong not necessarily as just an API gateway and not just necessarily as a gateway scene uh, at the edge, right, but uh, eventually uh, a, as, as part of the service mesh offering or as, you know, as an independent, like, uh, event-based gateway as well. Yep, no, I, I totally see that. That's where you guys are going and want to get into that market. And that's a, it's definitely a wild, wild west at the moment with the players that are in that service mesh market. So it's wide open for a lot of things, um, which I assume is kind of why you're doing the gRPC as well, because uh, we don't really have interest in gRPC on the edge. But we have more interest in gRPC inside of a service mesh kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, we've had we've heard both use cases, but the latter most often. I, w I would agree. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's uh, that's about it for like upcoming releases in a in a nutshell. So uh, you know, if anybody else has any questions, I don't want to. I, I would say my only other ask is we're driving a lot of our. Um, I love our APIs with Open API specification uh, 3.0. Um, I know that there's some, there's a lot of enterprise kind of support around that. And I don't know if there's any thoughts on opening any of that into community or not. Hmm. You're, you're, you're correct. Yeah, there is, uh, there is work already done in enterprise version, being able to parse open API spec files into uh, and creating, uh, updating the router based on it. Uh, I don't know. I don't think I can speak to anything in the community side as, as aspect of things about open API spec, at least for the moment. No, yeah, and, and that's fine. And it, this is where having your roadmap and our road and looking at it and seeing what's on my roadmap for what I want to do internally would be great because it's something that since we're driving so much internally with it and we have a lot of APIs in, in our enterprise, um, being able to use that spec to, to drive and, and help our customers just provide that, that specification to configure things is something that I want to start doing internally anyway. Um, right. If, if you are an enterprise user, that is uh, something yeah. that uh, teams are looking at for sure. Yeah. yeah. But for community, again, I, I think uh, for now, I, I don't, I don't think I can speak. If, if we create that regard. Yeah, if, if we create a plug-in or something,
would do that from the community side, would that then go against kind of some of your enterprise offerings and not be something that you'd want to see in the community? I mean, um, not necessarily because in enterprise we're talking about, you know, uh, having the open API spec create the whole, like, uh, say, like integrate with our developer portal and the documentation that is provided via the portal, et cetera. So ultimately there's, I mean, if you want to write an open source plugin, uh, like we're not going to prevent you from doing that. Uh, so I don't, like, I think that uh, if you want to write a plugin and make it open source, you're free to do so. Um, but I, I don't think, um, I don't think it would quite match what we're going to do in the enterprise edition. Um, but it would certainly be helpful to a lot of community users out there, probably. Okay, good to know. I don't want to get on your guys' bad side. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Uh, I, I can't guarantee that it will be published on the official hub, for example, because maybe it would like somehow compete a little bit. But ultimately, mm -hmm. like, I mean, we're not going to prevent anybody from writing an open source plugin if they want to. Uh, like we have uh, OpenID Connect plugin from uh, the Nokia team that's open source, right? Uh, I would I would I would say that it's certainly not as complete and tested as the one that we offer as part of the enterprise offering. Um, you know, like we, we, we've looked at both and we've compared both and there's clearly a uh, difference, but it, I know that it has been useful to some community users. So, you know. Good to know, thanks. Yeah, welcome. All right, any other questions or topics y'all want to cover? All right, then um, I will wrap us up for today. I'll, I'll hang out for a few more minutes in case anybody has any questions. Um, but thank you all for joining us today. Our next call is on August 13th. Um, we'll be looking for presenters for that, so if you have a topic in mind or you'd like to present, uh, feel free to drop that in the agenda doc um, and we uh, will be in touch. So thank you all. Bye. Thank Bye you. everybody. Bye. Thank you for coming. Thank you.